The film you are about to see represents a significant breakthrough in the advancing science of the motion picture. For years, the industrial film has been plagued by the always difficult, sometimes impossible to explain costs of original creative thinking in script preparation, photography, and editing. Now, at last, we are pleased to announce the elimination of these unnecessary irritants through the utilization of a hard-hitting, versatile, and all-encompassing film document, the first truly all-purpose film. When viewing this film, please keep your company name and your product in mind. You are about to witness history in the making. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this is episode one of Crowbar's Combo Breaker, where we talk monk theory crafting, kind of. Basically, this is a video series to go along with my blog, crowbarx.blogspot.com. It is a, I guess, documentary of my adventures in World of Warcraft. Let's figure out how to become better monks. Hopefully you learn something. Uh, I've already learned a bunch along the way, so let's kind of get into it and show you guys what I've learned, and hopefully you learn something as well. So today we are talking about SimCraft. SimCraft? Crowbar, that sounds like math. Are you telling me I'm going to have to do math? Math? Oh no, numbers! As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. So, get ready, put on your number hats, and let's take a look at what this is and what it does. But Crowbar, I don't play a monk. Can I still use SimCraft if I play a Boomkin? I'm sorry that you play a Boomkin. We're all a little sorry. Maybe next patch things will get better. Absolutely, you can use SimCraft. It doesn't matter what class you play. Hopefully, the tools I'll show you today can help you out. Maybe you'll learn something. So just what exactly is SimCraft? Basically, SimCraft is a tool to measure your DPS based on your current gear set. Uh, but you can take it a little farther than that. If you want to um, sim, let's say, a full heroic set that you don't have yet and you want to see how much DPS you're going to do at a certain gear level, you can do that with this tool and I'm going to show you how to use it. But Crowbar, there's already best in slot lists online. All this information is out there. Why do I need SimCraft? You're absolutely right. A lot of this information is out there on the web and gets out there right after the patch launches, the new gear sets out. People do this work for you so you don't have to. What I want to do is get people out of that mindset of just copying whatever they find online and give you the tools to decide what is your best in slot based on the way you play your character. Okay, as you can see here, we are on simulationcraft.org. Right here you can download the latest release of SimCraft. They have versions for OS X, uh, if you want the source code, 64 and 32-bit versions of the application. So now we have SimCraft open. How do I use it? This looks confusing. I see all these tabs. I don't know what to do. Help! I've had enough of this. I'll give her a piece of my mind. I'll get to the bottom of all of this. So let's make this not so intimidating. So we're not going to mess with many things in here is to not overwhelm you. Uh, we are going to start by clicking on the import tab. Here you will see something very similar to the World of Warcraft website. What we're going to want to do is pull up our armory. Let's pull up my armory, copy, and we are going to paste this into the address bar down at the bottom. From there we are going to click on import. Oh my god, what happened? What is this? Text confusing! Ah! I should have known he was as good as dead when they wheeled him in. 
You did everything possible, everything you could, Dr. Corbin. Everything. Everything except save my patient. Okay. Don't give up just yet. I know this may seem a little confusing if you're not used to seeing numbers or code. Don't worry, you don't really have to worry about this part. Um, you've imported your character, you've done everything you need to know. Okay, so all we have to do is hit the simulate button. From there, we're going to be taken to a new page. And look at this, it gives us lots of numbers and graphs and things. Confused yet? Don't worry. Okay, so right here at the top we see a certain amount of DPS. For me, 398,896 DPS. What this is telling me is this is the amount of DPS I should be able to pull on a single target patchwork style encounter in my current gear setup. What it'll do is it'll give me the breakdown of each skill and how much damage on average it should be doing. Basically the tool takes my character, gives it an optimal rotation, and does a patchwork style encounter and gives me the results as it would appear on World of Logs or Recount SCADA, any of your DPS meters, just an in-depth guide. So it says, with this gear I should never reach uh, 0 0.09 energy cap, uh, the different pri procs I can have, um, my priority list of actions, it'll even give me the sample sequence of the abilities it used to get this result. So if you're interested in learning what abilities you should be casting, this sample sequence right here, all these numbers and letters correspond. You can find out what it is doing. The current stats I have gives me the gear I'm using, which talents I currently have selected, and then the profile. So what does this mean? Well, basically, according to SimCraft, I should be able to pull almost 400,000 DPS in my current gear. So from here, some of the things uh, we can do is we can change our stats to get a different result. Let's say I want to stack just a ton of haste. We can do that and see what it does to our DPS. Am I gearing properly? Well, I don't know. Someone said I should be stacking crit. Let's throw it in SimCraft. Does it give me a DPS boost? That's the great thing about this tool. You can try different things with your character and see the results without having to re-gear, re-jam, re-enchant. If you want to get more insight on someone else's class and what they should be doing and how they can improve, you can enter them in SimCraft. So let's check out the options tab for a second. We have a few different things that we can simulate. You want to make the fight longer, you want to make the fight shorter. You can mess with a bunch of different styles. If you want to uh, make it a cleave fight, you can set it to a cleave fight and queue for that. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to try a few different things. We are going to go to the buffs. We're going to toggle off all the buffs. We're going to toggle off all the debuffs. Mainly because we as monks, we can't cast Bloodlust. Uh, we don't have a Skull Banner. We don't have Stormlash Totem. Uh, Simcraft does all of that for you. It simulates in that you're expected to have all these buffs. Well, if we're just doing tests on a targeting dummy, obviously we're not going to have these buffs. So we are going to go with Strength, Agility, Intellect, our Stats buff, and our Critical Strike buff because that's what Windwalker Monks can do. If you are trying this out on a different class, feel free to use the buffs that you have applicable to yourself. Oh, we're not going to mess with any scaling plots. We're not going to mess with reforging inside the app. Uh, we are going to change the length of the fight to 200 seconds, which is about 3.3 .3 minutes. 
the only reason we're doing this right now is to test um, just a targeting dummy situation because we're going to go over a few different ways of gearing and see what kind of results we get and then we're going to take it in game and see if we can match those results to see if this thing is accurate at all. So now that we have our patchwork style three minute fight with our buffs let's go ahead and hit the simulate button again and see what happens. Well, you'll notice from our last result to this result the DPS number is pretty huge. We're only at about 330k down from 398k. So, with my current gems and reforge, single target, by myself, no extra buffs, this is the number I should be able to hit. Uh, is this accurate? Mm, let's go into game and figure it out. Okay, let's take a look at our first result and see what happened. Okay, as you'll notice, uh, my rotation is off, I didn't pre-pot, I played like crap this first round. I didn't second pot. Um, so that resulted in me getting about 305k DPS with a 330k sim. Um, what does this say? say I suck the class or um, yeah so we could go in game and we could do better 30k off that that's pretty ballpark range but we're gonna continue to do tests and keep going on so let's bring up some theory crafting questions about monk um, there's a big room well not rumor uh, if you look online for caps and breakpoints. One of the biggest things you'll find is that when you're dual wielding as a monk, 60% is your crit cap. Now, is this true? Am I just pulling random numbers out of the air? Um, why 60%? Um, this is a question a lot of not only monks but other melee that dual wield do not know. The reason for the 60% cap is because of a thing called glancing blows. Now, if you don't know what a glancing blow is, uh, let's find out. Uh, may I see this, officer? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. What do you mean, terrible? Well, uh, your handwriting. My handwriting? Why? Oh, now you... wait, you don't understand. It's the way you cross your T, you see, very high, and that, and that half open O, and that, that little thing you put on the end of the W. Hey, what are you trying to pull? Oh, well, nothing, only you never should have been a cop in the first place. Who are you? Uh, according to your handwriting, you have what is known as, uh, well, great artistic ability. I have what? Artistic ability. You see, you should have been a, well, a, a writer, or, or a painter, or, or a, a singer, even. No kidding. Yeah, a writer, huh? A singer? Or a painter? How do you know? Basically, your auto attacks have a 24% chance to be glanced off the mob doing reduced damage. Even when attacking from behind. Now, this 24% takes precedence over your critical strikes. So, for your auto attacks, 
So where am I getting this information? How do I know this? How can you trust me? Well, there's a great article on WoW Wiki about glancing blows and uh, it goes into a little more in-depth on the explanation. The fact that 24% of all white damage melee attacks made against a boss mob will be glancing blows no matter what you do has implication choosing how much crit rating gear to use. Due to the table-based nature of WoW's attack resolution system, glancing blows take precedence over critical hits. If your combined miss, dodge, parry, block, glancing blow, and crit chance against a mob is 100% higher, you'll never see a normal white damage hit made against that mob. All your hits will either be glancing blows or critical hits. If it exceeds 100%, it is your critical hit chance that gets pushed off to the end of the table. Any crit rating gear past this point will not improve your critical hit chance with white damage melee attacks at all. This is sometimes called the crit cap. What does that mean? It means that your white auto attacks can no longer critically hit after a certain point of crit rating. However, your special attacks can continue to crit. So that's why this is considered a soft cap and not a hard cap. So does this mean as a DPS monk that I should go for 60% exactly and not get a single point more of crit? No. The Crit will still benefit you and it will still benefit your special attacks, but your auto attacks uh, and all your white hits, it's going to be pretty useless after that 60%. So that's why 60% is a good marker for monks nowadays. Come Warlords of Draenor, that's going to change entirely, but I'll go over that in a future post and a future video. We'll go over what's coming for the next expansion to help you get prepared. Okay, with this information in hand, now what do we do? Well, let's start building our character around these stats that we know. Um, let's try sim crafting with over 60% crit, see what happens. Let's make a sim craft with a lot of mastery. What does that do to our damage? And we'll be taking a look at what happens when we stack haste. So I encourage you to try different things out uh, see what works best for your character, for the gear and style that you prefer, and see if it actually increases your DPS. Okay, Grobar, so how do I mess around with these caps in SimCraft? What are the magic buttons to push to change my crit, haste, and all that? There are ways to do that in SimCraft, and it can actually get pretty complicated. So what I'm going to do is show you another tool to mess around with your different caps and breakpoints, and export that into SimCraft make things a little easier. We're going to be going to askmrrobot.com. Some of you might be familiar with this site. Some of you might hate this site. Some of you might say this gives terribly inaccurate information. That can be true to an extent, but it depends on how you use it. And I'm going to show you how to use some of the more advanced features of this website. Well, what do you want? I want the steak. For what? I want to get some kicks with the steak. With these steaks? Sure. So here on the main page, we're going to click on Optimize Your Character. Now you're going to look for your character on your realm. And let's find mine. And what it's going to look like, you're going to want to update from your armory. And this is what it's going to give you when you first log into the system or pull up your character. It's going to give you a default build of how it thinks you should be gearing your character. Now a lot of the times the default doesn't work great um, but let's do it just to um, see what SimCraft says about it. See if we get anything higher than last time. So how do we export this to SimCraft? Well first we're going to want to hit the optimize button and this is going to tell us what gems we should be using, how to reforge our gear, um, and it's not always right. Look it wants me to add a strength enchant which probably I could use something a little better in my gear 
than an actual strength enchant. But anyways, let's see how we can export this result to SimCraft. If you see in the right on the right hand side here, there is a button that says export to. You can export it to their own add-on, the Asmus Robot add-on, or you'll see SimC over here. If you click on SimC, this is your SimCraft export and it's going to give you a lot more numbers. Let's copy this and let's go back to SimCraft. Okay, we are now back in SimCraft. We are going to click on the Simulate tab. There's going to be this little blank tab right here. Click on that. It's going to open a new tab for you. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to paste your results from Ask Mr. Robot, this big thing of text, right into the SimCraft page. From here, all you have to do is click Simulate. And now it gives us a new result. Compared to our last sim, the DPS is slightly smaller. So our current gear is going to give us better results than the default SimCraft results. But we want to do things a little more advanced. So instead of using the default tools, let's go back to Ask Mr. Robot. And we are going to click on this Edit Weights button. From here, we are going to click on the Advanced tab. It's going to give us a little more options. Okay. The haste rating at 22%, which some consider the soft cap for haste. We know that our crit soft cap is around 60%. And you'll notice that it weights based on priority here. Uh, so let's change mastery to be above strength. Because even though our mastery is pretty terrible, I'd still rather gear for mastery over uh, strength. So you'll see that it uh, prioritizes haste over crit over mastery. Let's see what that does. Okay, it's telling us to regem a little bit. Oh, let's update for armory, make sure that's right. Okay. You'll notice that it wants me to drop about 6% haste. Uh, it wants me to gain a little more crit. Uh, it's going to give me a little more hit, a little more mastery, a little more attack power, a little more agility. So that's going to drop us to around 9,000 haste. Uh, if you look at my gear, I'm running about 12,000 haste right now. And uh, crit, I'm at around 57.58% raid buffed. Um, with the agility flask and food, that gives me around 60% uh, total. So let's take this into SimCraft and see what happens. I'm going to go back, I'm going to paste this in our Simulate tab, and here we go. So that's an even lower result than before. Well, let's try something else. So maybe we can run a little more haste. Let's run around 12,000 haste, staying at the Crypt cap. So now this has me re-gemming, reforging, re-enchanting. If you don't want to spend all that gold doing that, you can click this enable reforge button only, and it'll tell you how to optimize all of this with reforge. Since we are going to go in-game and test our results against SimCraft to see what our DPS could be like, let's uh, stay on the reforge only for now and export to SimCraft.
Okay. So now this is giving us a slight increase, uh, going with around 12,000 haste. What if we wanted to go really heavy into haste? Let's say... Fifteen thousand haste, and to compensate, we're going to lower the crit to fifty-seven percent. So we can hit that just from reforging without having to do anything else. Okay, and let's simcraft this result. You'll see this gives us a slightly significant DPS increase, but is that accurate? Let's take a look at what happens in game when we run high haste. end up with around 332k DPS. I would say this is a fairly accurate result for what SimCraft gave us. Uh, now if we were to rejam, reforge, re-enchant, we would probably get better results, but it seems that stacking more haste does give us a benefic beneficial DPS increase. Now that is against most theory crafting going on now for monks. People are saying to drop haste, pick up more mastery, uh, pick up a little more crit, and just go straight agility. But what happens when you go straight haste? Is it a significant DPS increase? Well, let's try something a little different. Let's try stacking mastery, seeing if that is the way to go, so we can get more um, brew procs uh, to have more uptime on our uh, tiger's eye brew. So let's go back into Ask Mr. Robot. We are going to edit the weights again. We are going to drop the haste down to around 9,000. We're going to stay, um, or let's just zero out haste. And we are going for a mastery craft, or a mastery cap. Uh, let's go for 100%. We're gonna have to change that value to 2.5. Our haste we are going to bring down to 1.8. And you'll see just from reforging we can get to about 72% mastery. What does SimCraft think about stacking mastery?
You'll see after running a mastery build staying close to the crit cap that we get around 326k DPS which is pretty much exactly the result we got here. Does that mean SimCraft is accurate? Uh, I would say yes, it's pretty accurate for the results that we're getting based on in-game uh, testing. Let's try a more balanced build, something that heroic raiding monks are running today. Uh, let's try a... So most heroic raiding monks that are in Siege of Orgrimmar right now like to run anywhere from 10k to about 12k haste. So let's ignore mastery for now. Let's go back to 60% for the crit cap. Our haste rating we are going to do 11,500. We'll just sit in the middle between the 10 and uh, 12k. Okay so this is just from Reforged. It's going to give us a little bit more mastery and uh, drop our haste just a tad. Now let's take a look at what SimCraft says from this result. So we are going to simulate this. And it's around 330k DPS again. Let's take it in game and see what happens. Okay, and you'll notice after about three minutes with a more balanced build that we hit around 326k DPS. Again, fairly close. I do think that because I am only reforging, I'm not re-gemming, re-enchanting, totally stacking my character to the max that it can. That, that's why these results are so close, but I am getting close to the target DPS that SimCraft is giving. So I would say that it is a valuable resource to judge what your character is capable of, uh, whether it be on a single target encounter, whether it be cleave, um, whether it be in a raid. You can also set this up instead of raid bosses if you want to spec for challenge modes or proving grounds where it nerfs your item level you can simulate for that as well. So if you want to be the best tanking monk that you can for challenge modes, or if you want to get to the end of proving grounds, this tool can help you optimize your gear for that content. It doesn't have to just be for high-end rates. So if we go back to the options in this, and instead of target level, we pick a five-man heroic, or if we pick a 5-man normal, we can test for those things as well. If we want to test for PvP, how to best optimize for that, we can test against player level as well. Here is another UFO bulletin. The Defense Department has just announced that the unidentified flying object has suddenly disappeared from our radar screen. They believe the object has either disintegrated in space, or it may be a spaceship from some other planet which has the ability to nullify our radar beams. Because of the ominous situation, the President has ordered the Strategic Air Command into action. Now I do want you guys to take in a note that while running these tests, I am almost at a 580 item level, which is pretty much the highest you can get in-game right now. So don't get discouraged if you can't hit the crit cap right now, or if you can't hit 10k haste even. Uh, play around with the stats that you have to better optimize your character to see if you can improve your DPS just from a simple tool. 
I would recommend totally reforging, regemming, reenchanting to get the best out of your character based on the stats given. I'm not telling you that you should play a haste build or a crit build or a mastery build. Play your character the way you want, but optimize it to be the best it can be. With that, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, hope you had fun. If you like this content and you want to see more of it, subscribe to my videos. Uh, along with every video, there will be a post on my blog going a little more in-depth into the details of what I'm talking about. Uh, the reason for these videos is if you don't like to read, well, here's a video content. Or if you can't get it just from the pictures on my website, uh, here's me going into the programs explaining a little better on how to use them. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a comment down below. If you want to go over a question, if you think I'm absolutely wrong and crazy and that I shouldn't be doing this, let me know. I want your feedback to make these videos better. I want your feedback to make my blog better. I want you to learn from my experiences, my mistakes, my successes. I want to help make you a better player. If these videos help you do it, let me know. Let me know if I'm doing a good job. Let me know if I'm doing a terrible job. If you happen to just find this video on YouTube, I have a blog that goes along with the series that I'll be running. You can check that out. Uh, I'll post the links below. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, please subscribe if you like it. There will be more to come. Until next time, guys, I'm Crowbar, and this has been Crowbar's Combo Breaker. Thanks.